and welcome to Hixie Studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this gatefold card with a belly band. And we are going to use this uh, flowers and fruit, fruit blossom edge from Precious Marieki. Um, okay, so first thing, I'll just take the, um, the, the belly band off to just show you. Slides off, and then the card opens like so. So we, the first thing I'm going to do, this is a Pixie Sparkles background. I have done them a lot. I am just going to do it very quickly for those that you have maybe not seen um, the Pixie Sparkles before. So I have, I have, excuse me, a very, very dirty, well, I say dirty, very well used spraying station. Um, it's almost not worth, I mean, it dries out every time, so it's almost not worth replacing it. But here we go. We are going to, first of all, spray one side of the card with a little bit of a mist of water. Just making sure I'm spraying it the right way. Okay, and I'm going to turn it over and it does begin to curl, which is why I've sprayed it one side. Um, and now I'm going to spray it on this side. You can put the pixie sparkles down first and then spray it, but it is entirely up to you. I'm going to do it this way. Um, so you can see now it looks like I've already got some picked some stuff up from my spray station here. So this is a really lovely colour, very sort of um peachy tone. Um, and as ever with Pixie Sparkles, you know, it's up to you how much coverage you want. Um even though I've not like covered the whole thing, once I spray that again, you'll see that it starts to, to move and you can move it and get more sort of streaky bits. It's entirely up to you, but it does need the water because the water activates the binder in it, um, which is what makes it stick to the surface. You can see. But getting a little puddle there, which I don't mind. It's going to produce, you see, now it's running. And that's because the card, where, where it's got wet, has started to kind of warp in its own way. I'm quite liking that. I'm quite liking the way these things are going in there. So I'm going to put that aside to dry. Okay. Now, the ones I am going to use, I have, I did a bit of smooshing too. So I might just do a little bit more. Um, so you, you can get another piece of card put over and then you get more of a coverage. But that, that's basically the, the, the most straightforward way to use Pixie Sparkles. So this makes some really gorgeous backgrounds. That's why I'm playing again still because I can see it moving. Okay, let's put it down. Put it down. Okay, so as you can see, the ones I've got here, I did, I did a bit of smooshing. So basically, while it was still wet like that, I put another piece of card on the top and just pressed down. Uh, and that kind of spreads it out a little bit more, gives you a bit of a, a lighter sort of tone to it. Okay, so I've got several pieces. These are off cuts from previous projects, but they will be enough for this. So, uh, move that out of the way, sorry. The base card. It's five inches across so if you imagine this was a piece of a four card i have cut it down here so this is five inches and then cut it so this is 11 and a half do not throw this piece away this piece is the perfect size to make our back band with later so i'm going to put that to one side so i am going to just grab my all the way under the table there it is my um scoreboard and i am going to score it at two and seven eighths from that end and then i'm going to turn and score at two and seven eighths from that end okay i'm not going to at the moment i'm not going to to fold and um burnish it because we need to now do the cutting and these these show us this that we're going to cut into this end and we're going to cut into this end now this particular um edger is multi-directional so 
if you can see, you can see you don't need to worry uh, which way up it is because the flowers go both ways. So here you can see a flower head with a stem and here you can see a flower head with a stem going that way. So if you turn it round, you've still got one flower head with a stem going down and one with it going up. So um, you st can still do this if, even if it was directional. Um, I did um, a, vi <coughs> excuse me, a video a while ago with a butterfly one and what you would do is once you've cut the first one there, you would turn it over and you would cut it in there. If so, if you want to use an edge that is um, di directional, then have a look for. I think it was a butterfly butterfly gatefold card that I did. Okay, so we are going to take this down. In fact, I'm just going to use a couple of these bits. Okay, now this is a quite a fancy die. So depending on the pressure of your machine, it will depend, you might need to run it through a couple of times. The other thing I'd say with, with this die is if you can slightly, I know it's long, you can slightly offset it because we're, we're kind of giving a lot, lot of cutting points for this pressure. If you cut it this way, it's not so, not so bad because you've got fewer cutting points. If you can kind of slightly offset it on your um, your cutting plate, then it, it it will help. Okay, so we'll put our plates on. Oh, need to fix the sparkles before I knock that over, and we'll run that through. And out it comes. It doesn't take long. It just seems long when I'm waiting. There we go. Right, so now I'm going to turn it over and have a look before I um, take the die away just to make sure that I'm happy that it's cut through. You can always take your, yeah, you can see it has cut through. So I'm happy with that. I don't need to run that through again. Okay, so put my board out the way. So, yes, just be careful. Um, sometimes running it through with um, with the, an emboss, you know, with a lot of these dies you can cut and emboss. So if it hasn't quite cut on the first one because you're asking a lot of it, and you can put it through with with an emboss. So let's um, remove this. The dies come out really nicely, and these dies are just slightly less than five inches. Now, if you want to. Um, Cut your base card down to the exact width you can. I just find it easier to know that I'm working with five inches and then I, I cut it in. Okay, whee! Nearly, nearly lost my pokey tool. Okay, so we're going to um, remove this from here because I'm going to need this die again. Now, just because I am going to have to cut it again in the, the coral, I'm not going to do it again on here. I'm going to put that one to one side and I've already done it here and scored and burnished it. So you cut it in one end, cut it in the other and then you fold and burnish. So let's just clean out this die um, because we need to cut it this die again here uh, in some of our uh, uh, in, in, in this case, the pixie powder paper, but you could use, um, if you're not into kind of your messy crafting, you could use uh, any of your pattern papers or just some colored card. Okay, let's just check. A few little bits left. Let's get our pokey tool and uh, remove those. It is important to clean your dies. And sometimes it's like a, it feels like a bit of a faff. Um, because it's always these tiny, tiny little bits that um that get sort of because they get pushed in so hard and they're only really small. Um but it is really important that you do because otherwise, let's fit there, um when you come to uh the cup again 
if you've already got this area filled this this cutting edge is not going to have the same amount of sort of um, pressure and so it's not going to cut through the die uh, sorry, through the card so well so it really is um, although yeah it is a bit of faff a die a die cleaning brush makes uh makes it a lot easier but um it is absolutely necessary to make sure you clean out your dies so our gatefold card is ready um i'm going to grab a piece now mm. Mm -hmm. and this is a case, case now of, oh how am i going to do this um see what else i need stuff for um the reason I, I'm, I'm humming and ahhing about this one is because there's a lot of white space and I quite want, I quite like it completely um, coloured. So I think we'll go, we'll go with this bit here. And I am just going to grab my, um, look at that. It's me off enough to do that to my side. Bang, crash. How much noise can I make? Okay, so same again. We're going to uh, take this down. Now, because this isn't, um, this is, I'm going to cut this out completely. I'm not too worried about it being on, you know, my placement on here. Okay, so we're going to go through again. And because now, ooh, taking the paper with me. Because now I can, I'm going to place it that way uh, and then uh, it's less pressure on each of those um, cutting points there. Sorry, more pressure on each of those cutting points because there's less of them. Okay. That uh, cup. There it is. Okay, so this off. Now it won't have completely come out, even when I, as you can see here, it's cut out here, but not here. So what I tend to do when I'm using dies like this is then I will grab my um, trimmer again. And I will put it up and I will fiddle it around. So I just hit the edge of the die and then I follow the edge of that die all along. Okay, that was the card, not the paper, uh, the die. You see, I've not quite hit the card there, but I'll do that in a sec. So I get a nice straight edge and I know how big then this piece is going to be. So this will come off here and here. And we can pull our piece off there. Get rid of the scraps, and we will put the die to one side to be cleaned later. Okay. So now we have cut our pieces with that beautiful fruit blossom, flower blossoms, flower blossoms or fruit blossom, fruit blossom edge. I was right the first time. Um, so we can put that to the side for the moment. Um, I'm going to decide. Which bit I'm going to put in my back here. Doo -doo -doo. This is where I end up just fiddling and faffing around. This bit's quite nice. I quite like this bit. So I'm just going to eyeball that. Just have a little bit of a border. Just a little mark there. And a little mark down there. You can see where, when you do these messy backgrounds, they do get messy on the back, but as you're sticking them on, oh, where's a pencil one? As you're sticking them onto something, the back won't be seen. And oh, 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 right. So this piece, I'm going to stick in here uh, with some. Blue. Now, for the sentiment, I've used the With Love one, I think it's from a little Sizzix thinlet set, 
but you could put whatever you want in the back. It's um, up to you. So there's our little background piece, and I'll grab my sentiment. I'm just going to get a piece of paper so that I can push down on that. There you go. Um, get the sentiment in. Really cut that out. A little with love. Got the sort of the, the fancy writing and it went with the feel of the edge. So we'll stick that in. Grab my tweezers. Ooh, doo -doo, there it is. Oh, a little fine tip glue. I thought for one minute it was going to say not plain today. There you go, block that off. Aha. And. There. And then I'll love the rivet. Okie dokie, right, so that's that's the sentiment done and I'm just going to get my piece of paper and get over over the top. Okay, so that's our gatefold. Now we need to do the the belly band for it. Now I um said that when you uh make your base if you make your um base card from a piece of A4, the bit, the strip you get left is perfect. Okay, now you will need to score this. You will need to score this, and this might sound a little bit odd, but I did play around with it. You need to score it at two and seven eighths, like we did with the, the card, but we also need to make sure that this is slightly bigger. Um, so we are going to score this at three. Okay. And I'm going to burnish those folds. <laughs> that was that was the thing sliding there. And you see it just meets. Okay, it just meets. And should be just fractionally bigger. Than the card so that we can slip it in. So, the what I did because this literally just meets, um, there's nothing you can stick underneath. So, the way I because what I did was I attached another piece of the, the pattern at the back. So, I just took some this is finger lift tape and I literally made sure it was lined up and I just put literally put some strips of. The finger lift tape across the back to hold it together and then when I'm ready to, to stick the, the piece on in a minute I'll, I'll remove those. So we need, there's all my bit to choose from, I need a piece for the front here. I'm trying not to be too faffy, just go for it. Just do. Yeah. Again, I will take my. Now, I've put the mark there and I put my mark here, and that's I'm going to put on the back of that so I know that's for the front. But just so that I don't have to faff around several times, I know that this is going to be the same width, so I just need to. Put another mark on here, so that's the second bit I'm going to need to cut, and that will be the back. Okay, making a right old fluttering under the dust today. So, okay. I have the ever decreasing crafting space. I'm sure you all, you all uh, understand that at home where you end up working in like a six inch square. Okay, so first thing I am going to do is I am going to cut my card 
and then I'm going to turn it around and cut that little strip off so I don't have to do it on both pieces at the moment. That comes off and then put these two in half. So I have my bit for the front and I have a bit for the back. Put those there. Just going to keep this up for a second because what I also need is a piece of um, black card to go behind here. So I'm going to just go with my pencil. Want it to... Now, just notice I've still got a little bit stuck in there. This is, is about the same length, so I'm not going to worry too much about... If you've got bits that stick out, always make sure you, you measure on the longer bit, but this one is okay. This but is longer, so I'm just going to bring it down. This is about the longest part. So I need to make sure I have enough for that. Okay, so quickly cut that bit. Oh, come on. One of the good things about having this grid is that the card it does hold the card. But sometimes it also means it's Difficult when you're trying to actually move the card into position. There's my little line. There's my little line. And it's up again. Okay, okay, okay. So now we need to assemble the bands. We've got that bit there. And we have that bit for here. And our front bit for here. Okay. So. Let's stick these on. I'm just going to use the Cosmic Shimmer. Is it called? Yes, Cosmic Shimmer. Acrylic glue. Put those on. Front. There. And I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to put the glue on this, but before I stick it on, I'm also going to remove the backing from my um, finger lift tape. It's just holding my belly band in place. If you do use double sided tape, and it's not always easy to get off, finger lift tape, um, it has a where the if you see it the the carrier is actually wider than the actual adhesive so you've got a little bit that's easy to pop up there we go that's our back here's our front uh, we're going to need to stick this on so let's grab our little gluey sheet that we can dab off onto And we'll get this one. Actually, I'm going to move that off because it's hard to see white on white there. So I'm going to put the glue on the larger, the larger areas. But also, you want to make sure you have put some along this bottom edge, just so that it uh, doesn't flap up. Okay, I'm just going to bring this goes on to my black piece. There. And then my black piece is going on to the front of my belly band. Right. Hey. And fingers crossed, if everything's the glue's hold it. No, no I'm not going to look, just popped it off. That's because the glue isn't ready, but it will slide now, slide into there like like our original. Let's put our original one back in. Pull that off so you can see. Yeah, the, the glue's not dry enough yet. If I try it, it's going to pop off like it did just then. So this will fit into. It does fit in. 
there you go into our belly band like so and when that one's dry it will also do the same but there you go you can see all the separate parts all together and the two separate parts so that's using the uh, flowers and fruits edger from um that so the fruit blossom edge from the flowers and fruit selection by precious mariecki thank you for joining me Thank you.